Hello, and thank you for taking the time to join us for the Youth Passing System webinar series, where we continue our mission of empowering youth coaches to spread the ball around and score more points with an effective passing game. So after years of being asked, which passing concept should I run for teams, gosh, anywhere from high school on down, we created a streamlined plug and play passing system for busy coaches to just plug into their run game. Our program specifically improves your quarterback's decision making, ensuring your team plays confidently on game day, relying on muscle memory to light up that scoreboard. My name is Matt Lasker, and alongside the eternal one, fake coach Leach, together we will be your guides through this free webinar series. So after spending a few hours with eternal coach Leach and I in completing this webinar series, you will have a pre-snap to the next snap repeatable process your quarterbacks will step through on every single play. If you don't have this, it is a must because without a quarterback who understands what's going on, you don't have a chance. You will have pre-made or custom Engaging lesson plans your athletes will take home and play on their phones outside of the pressure of practice, which is huge for truly understanding the why. And lastly, you will have mastered your quarterback room as our streamlined passing game ensures you and your quarterback can figure out issues on the fly because we boiled it down to a few key points. Coach, we got a big response about what you said last episode regarding how the optimization of practice is more important than growing your playbook or constantly working on your scheme figure out how to be more precise in how we teach the stuff so we spend more time really thinking about practice and organizing practice than we do uh scheme because uh you know what we select and what we choose to do we try to rep it as often as we can and be as sharp and specific at it as we possibly can exactly coach this is why we created our system to allow quarterbacks to take endless virtual repetitions of our small playbook and our repeatable process off the field outside of the pressure of practice. So as always, Coach, we let the audience give you a icebreaker to start the show. Today's question comes from Coach Ryan Bailey in San Antonio, Texas. Coach Bailey wants to know what you ask other coaches when you have a chance to pick their brain. Uh, and, and what I'm most curious about what other people do really is how they practice. You know, how do you organize your week? Everybody gets so many hours in the week and there's a fine line between uh, <clears throat> what's too much and uh, what's too little, where you're going to get the most out of people, where the breaking point is. Absolutely, Coach. Completely agree. All right, so we are finally at one of the most popular stops in any webinar series that I've run uh, is the actual concepts themselves. I know it took a few shows to get here, but here's where it starts to get fun. You can see the concepts that we run, how we run them, and the systematic approach that you guys will take and that will help you implement the real easy way to do it using these plays. So I want to start off today by just refreshing your memory on the concepts that we chose to build this offense around. Okay, so there are three core passing concepts that all attack the same three places on the field, the same three patches of hopefully open grass. And our quarterbacks, regardless of which receiver runs into which piece of grass, as you can see on your screen, that changes from concept to concept. We've even seen coaches create their own combinations between three receivers, which is awesome. It doesn't matter. Quarterbacks will still read the defense in the same way, in the same process, every single time. And we're going to teach you the keys of how to get through that progression efficiently and making sure they throw to the first open man in that progression every single time, which will supercharge your offense and have you scoring points like crazy. So now that we've reviewed our three core plays and how our three grass read system works, we've created a very easy and repeatable process that every quarterback can learn and execute on every single snap. And like I said, we are gonna give you all types of content to reinforce these teachings, as well as obviously you'll be teaching them in practice, but it's all based on this process. And if you do this process every single day, when you're working passing, when it comes to game time, your quarterbacks will be on autopilot and just moving through their process like muscle memory. We've seen it happen time and time again. And so here on this slide, I wanna just define a few things for you. So the concept side is on your screen to the right, the non-concept side, we call that the backside. And that is where we look before every single play. Coach calls the play. We are in empty set. We call star and laser. Y stick. Quarterback 
looks backside, even though we've called Y stick, we look backside to see if these defenders over the receivers are seven yards back or more. And in this situation, they absolutely are. And so even though we've called this concept, the quarterback's going to snap the ball, take no steps, and fire the ball out to one of these receivers. It's with urgency that we need to do this. So it is a no step or at the very most just a hitch to get the ball out to them, almost as if we're turning double play. We want to get the ball out to these receivers as quickly as possible because if we do it quick enough, these receivers – will be one-on-one -on -one with, with the defender gaining at least five yards, but with the real opportunity to make a big play. And just like that, without running a true concept, we have already accomplished one of our main goals, getting our best athletes the ball in space. With one defender coming at him to make the tackle, I'll take those odds every single time. Now, conversely, we call the play. The quarterback steps up to the line of scrimmage, star Y stick. The quarterback looks over to his backside and the defenders are within seven yards, then that's fine. We do not run the concept. We put these re receivers out of our minds. I want to make sure I make that point, coaches. You need to tell these quarterbacks, once the backside gifts are dead, these receivers are dead, and we do not come back here. We need the entire four seconds to decode and find the open receiver within the concept once we snap the ball. If you see a quarterback, look backside. Backside is dead. We go to run the concept and during the, the play, during the actual play, looks to the concept side and comes back to the gift backside. That is a recipe for interceptions and usually interceptions for six points going the other way because a late throw like this is just nothing but dangerous. We will focus on the concept. We have three receivers on two defenders. Someone is going to be open based on our easy rules. So don't mess around. Once the backside is dead, it is dead. We are only focused on the concept side at that point for the entirety of that play. So it's simple. Pre-snap gifts are simple. Some coaches will want them to run sticks, which I did for many years. Some coaches want them to run slants. Completely fine either way. I would just say the younger that you go, I would stay with stick. And maybe eighth grade and above, you start to add in slants if you wish. But honestly, stick, we, we want high percentage, quick passes, and stick is the perfect pass for that. Most quarterbacks can sync up with their receivers pretty easily running sticks. Okay, so the next question that needs to be answered by the quarterback and by the receivers, by the way, is, is your first read open by alignment? And this is a newer concept for many coaches out there. And we love to do this. So we can eliminate the question around which defense it is. And stay with me, coaches. I know this might sound counterintuitive, but during my passing system deep dive over the last handful of years, the creators of the air raid system, Hal Mummy and Mike Leach, rest in peace, Mike Leach, the greatest coaches of all time, they're famous for not caring what defense it is. And this is exactly the reason why. When we start talking about defenses, you have to introduce multiple other questions behind that question so we can decode which defense it is. But if we are just looking at our first read and the defender that is in conflict with our first read, they will tell us everything we need to know regardless of what the defense happens to be doing as far as coverage goes. Let me explain. So as you can see, we are back in our star set and we've called the concept fade out. In fade out, our progression is go, out stick and so as we look at our first read we then turn our attention to the cornerback that is covering him okay so if this cornerback is seven yards off or more he is essentially in the deep third where we are trying to throw the ball we are going to say he is not open by alignment no the cornerback is too deep so we will absolutely peek at this cornerback after the snap but if he backs up or takes a few steps back, we are going to quickly move on to the second and third read and base our throw on whichever receiver this apex defender does not cover. Here's another scenario. We are running star Y stick. And in stick, our first read is just like fade out. It is a outside release go. And in this scenario, the cornerback is way up 
within two to three yards, almost looks like press man. And since we are trying to throw to the deep third and there is literally nobody in the deep third, the answer is yes, by alignment, he is open. Even though it might be counterintuitive coaches that this cornerback is down and it's going to suffocate my receiver. As long as we've taught this receiver how to get off of this press and get a clean release to the outside, this is this is an opportunity for a big big play, especially at the lower levels of football. It's very hard for a cornerback at the lower levels to guard a one-on-one, especially if we've been practicing pat and go every day. And this easy little fade ball that we warm up with every day is hitting automatically at the same point on the field. It's a very hard play to stop. Now, when we snap the ball, we have to, as always, Look at the cornerback. If he flies back with urgency, that probably means they were trying to disguise it. But we always have to look at the cornerback after we snap. If he stays down low, we're going to throw it. It should be automatic over the outside shoulder, dropping in the bucket and running for big yards. All right, here is another situation I want to show you. We're running wide corner and as opposed to stick and fade out, which had the outside receiver running to the deep third. Now in corner, the Y is running to the deep third, but we still need to identify this cornerback pre-snap because he's the one that would be in the deep third. So as we transition out of the overview into specifically breaking down each concept, did you have anything to add to our discussion so far about concept selection, philosophy, anything coach? No, if we adopt a new play, I've always tried to cut one that we have so we can control the package and practice and execute it because execution is the most important. You're better off having too small of a package than too big a one. You know, techniques or a tag or an adjustment that may be changed or perhaps where the way you practice it. It's, It's something you try to grow and build on, you know, all the time. All right, so let's get to our first concept, why stick? And we're going to start in open. So I want you guys to see how the T and the H responsibility changes when you're switch when you're swapping into our different formations. And as we talked about in the last video, how you can manipulate if you only have two or three reliable receivers, how you can manipulate this to make sure that those three are are involved with this somewhat of a triangle offense that we've created here. Okay? So Let me blow this up a little bit. It's open. You can see that we are attacking the the three pieces of grass here, the deep third, hook, and the flat. Two by two in our open set, it's the T that is the third person attacking. Now you can see here in early, the T is now swapped over to the backside to block or run a route. And the H has moved from here and has become the third option in our three grass read. Again, in open, it is the running back, but in our three by one set, it is the H. So as you can see in all of these stick diagrams, the progression is the same, go, stick, shoot. And so as we come to the line of scrimmage, we're looking for any pre-snap gifts. There are none. We're gonna look at our first read as he open by alignment. So this cornerback is low. And so yes, we are going to say he is open by alignment. The quarterback is going to go through the process, snap the ball, ready to throw this go route. And as long as there's a clean release, he's going to do that. Now let's say this cornerback bails out or just gets great coverage. We are going to move on to the two, three read, the apex defender read. So we have found the apex defender outside linebacker here. Sometimes it's a nickel, sometimes it's a safety, but he's he's an overhang defender that is outside of the box. So that's our apex defender. And as we move off of this first read, if for whatever reason we don't like it, we're going to come down here. We're going to read to the hook area. And if there is the color jersey from this apex defender still in this space, then we are simply going to turn and throw the shoot. There's no one else out here to guard the shoot. Okay. If we come down to this hook space and there is no color and the stick is sitting there with his hands flashing because they now the color has run out to the flat either he has this guy man to man or his job is literally to cover the flat but as we look at the stick the hook area but there's no color there standing with the stick we're just going to throw it now remember our main rule is to throw the ball to the first open receiver in our progression but if there is if there is color there like i said we're just going to throw the shoot simple as that Now, let's talk about stick 
and fade out for that matter against this look here. Because as we mentioned a second ago, with this cornerback at five yards or so and a safety now in the picture a little bit more, we have a, something to consider here. And it's called a hole shot. Okay. As the quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage and we look to answer the questions, are there any pre-snap gifts? Look over here. They're within seven yards. They're at five. So no, we're going to run the concept. And we look over here and this cornerback is at about five yards. So technically is the first read open by alignment? That's no, okay? Because he's not. He, this cornerback is at about five yards and has the ability to either bail out and get back to the deep third or come forward. Um, so it's kind of in no man's land. So as you can see on this card, it is red. He is not open by alignment, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to throw this ball. Because in this scenario, we're going to look at this cornerback's body position as we run at him to decide. So when the quarterback sees this look, he needs to prepare, be prepared to throw a hole shot for stick and for fade out as this goes running past him. We can't just put a fade ball trajectory on this because now there's a safety closer over the top. So it needs to be a line drive, a two ball for a lot of you quarterback gurus out there. Uh, but more of a line drive. So as he's clearing this cornerback and this cornerback's body position is still facing forward, right? If he turns and runs, that means he's a man. But we're assuming this is still a zone defense. So if his body position, his eyes, and his legs and hips are pointed forward, as this receiver starts to get around him, we are going to fire a two ball, a hole shot, so he can catch it just beyond that cornerback, but in front of the safety, so he has time to make a play. And we're going to call this a whole shot. And we are excited to take advantage of this because it is a, it's a nice play. Now, again, we need to cheat these outside receivers in the lower levels that we get so we can consistently make this throw without getting lucky. We have to be able to hit this throw on a pretty regular basis to really expose their defense. Okay. So scoot these receivers in until you can get consistent, nice, you know, whatever, 10 to 15 yard hole shot. Okay, great. If this body position changes on the snap of the ball and he bails out or he turns and runs and really closes down this, this hole shot and, and it's not comfortable to throw in there, which is fine, we will simply come down and go through our progression just like we did in the different coverage. We'll come down and look at this hook grass area and look for this apex defender within it. If his the color of his jersey is here, we're going to go ahead and throw the shoot. If it is not there, if he has gone out to the shoot area, we're going to go ahead and just quickly throw that stick. Again, our main rule is a throw to the first open man in our progression every single time. And as you can see, we can swap to our late formation. It's exactly the same. The quarterbacks aren't learning anything new. The receivers are all the receivers all know their assignments and we can just play fast. All right, so let's take a minute. I just want to show a couple clips of us running stick. This is the middle school level. I just want to show you all how it works. And so we are in open right now, and we have on H stick, actually. We are running it to the left. You can tell by the running back, we put them off to the left, and we have a go, a stick, and a swing. And you can see this cornerback is back pretty far, so we move on to the, to the apex defender read which is right here. And if he backs up or hesitates at all, and we'll base our movement on that. So the linebacker does back up. So it's a nice little swing pass. Four yard gain by the running back, nice and easy. Here we go again, the linebacker goes to the flat. So the receiver finds a little space. All right, let's move on to our next concept, which is fade out. This is a little different because out of two by two, it's the only concept that we mirror, but you'll see out of three by one, it takes on all of the rules that, that we have uh, for, the, for the other core plays. And as you can see in our three by one, it looks very much like stick. It's just a matter of reversing these two guys' responsibilities. So again, we are reading go out stick based on this cornerback leverage. Again, if he's back this far, he is not open by alignment. And so we'll peek after the we'll peek it after the snap, but quickly. But quickly move on to the apex defender read if this cornerback backs up or stays in the deep third. The only time we would throw it after the snap in this look, in this scenario, is if he flies down at the snap of the ball and vacates that deep third space. Okay, very much the same thing. Now, again, 
with in between defense with a cornerbacks at five yards and we have a safety cheated over a little bit more. We are we need to consider throwing the whole shot. It is not open by alignment, but we still love this look because if this cornerback's body is still facing forward in his own in his own manner as this receiver approaches him, we could release the ball right even as even before he gets the cornerback to some degree, if that body position stays like that, we can fire that ball so he's catching it right at about 10 yards and has a real chance to make a play on that safety and take it for some big yards. The only other thing I'll note is that uh, the stick, while most of our sticks are inside turning sticks uh, to the quarterback, because of the flow of this defense, uh, if if there is going to be pressure for this the stick for the for the number three receiver it's probably going to come from the inside flow if this apex goes out then the help will be coming from the linebackers that are in and so an outside turn is preferred when we're running three by one fade out so here's a quick look out of our 10u team running fade out i want to show you it works at every single level here is our 12u like seventh grade team running fade out by three by one. This is the same 12U team taking the shot over the top, one on one. This is a 14U team. And it's interesting how the, they hit a little bit differently at every, at every different level, but it's consistent. And not to mention, it can be a great red zone play as well. And here is our high school teams. And at the 20 yard line going in, that fade is, if you practice pat and go, on a pretty regular basis, that fade is deadly. Another red zone play for our high school teams. Simple as that. All right, hopefully those clips help you visualize how this all works. And you can see that it works at many different levels, not just the older levels. Okay, so the last concept we're gonna talk about with this three grass read system is Y corner, okay? And again, as you can see, at a two by two, our standard base set is the running back that is part of that three grass read with the now the corner attacking the deep third from the Y position. The outside receiver is now attacking the hook with the snag, which is essentially a slant and sit, all based around this outside linebacker or overhang defender or apex defender. And then the shoot is the running back heading into the flats, okay? Now I do want to pause one second. We'll get into, we have our own receiver videos, but the snag concept is so important in terms of finding open grass. I wanna stop for a second because we run drills and we'll give you certain drills to run snags with as coaches. But essentially I wanna just make sure everyone understands head coach, offensive coordinator and receiver coach before each play, before each corner concept is run, this outside receiver needs to find this apex defender and we are running at his back heel. So as he, if he backs up, the route is going deeper. We need to get behind him. So whether we settle in the grass before him or after him in our path, we are behind. So he can't really see us and play us, the receiver. He has to look at the quarterback and try to figure out what's going on. So it's Super important that we find this apex defender and that we run behind him, aiming at his back heels. If he goes back or in for whatever reason, we're going to find the open grass here. We're going to run our slant. As soon as we see this guy go back or in, we're going to put our foot in the ground, ground, step to the quarterback, flash our hands like the perfect drill, and be ready for the ball. If this defender comes out to the flats, if he's covering the running back, or maybe his job is just the flats, we are gonna run behind him again. But as soon as he crosses our face, like literally, cause he's gonna continue going, as soon as he crosses that receiver's face, that's where we sit down, ever he crosses us, cause he's gonna keep going. Uh, but we want to stay away from these guys as much as possible, okay? So in this scenario, in Y corner, quarterback's going to come up to the line of scrimmage. Looks like cover one, but that doesn't matter because we're going to look backside and see that there are no gifts. So we're going to run the concept. Is our first read open by alignment? Our first read is this corner route and the cornerback that could 
threaten that deep third is way down here. So yes, first read is open by alignment. We have our best receiver probably in this Y trying to be covered by a linebacker or maybe a safety, which in, in the lower levels of of youth probably isn't your best players. And so we want to take this one-on-one -on -one matchup. As long as there's a clean release and there's any separation at all, we are going to throw this ball. Now, one other point with the snag. If this turns into man, truly is man, and he's chasing, we do not sit at all. We run. It just turns into a slant. Obviously, if someone's chasing us and we stop, all that's going to do is help him cover us. So if it truly is man, as, you're, as the coach, we need to teach them the snag turns into just a regular slant. Okay, so against what looks like close press coverage, this first read is open by alignment, yes. All right, so against this coverage where we have a cornerback kind of sitting at about five yards and the safety is now more to the side of the field that we're trying to throw to, is our first read open by alignment? This is the only concept out of our three grass read concepts that in this look where there's a safety more involved, and the corner is at two yards or at five yards, that it is, yes, open by alignment because he is truly running in. And from a great angle, I, I might add, running into this whole shot, we just need to be conscious of this cornerback sinking a little more than typical, his body position after the snap. And then obviously we need to make sure that this safety can't make a play over top on the ball. We need to miss. If we miss, we need to miss on the outside shoulder, like always in corner, okay? But we'll go through our progression. It's open by alignment, yes. So the quarterback's going to snap the ball with every intention of throwing this. If this squeezes down and, and for whatever reason it's not comfortable, just like with any other hole shot, we're going to quickly move on to our apex defender read. We're going to come down to the hook to see if this snag is sitting in grass without any, without any defensive color of their jersey in this space. If he's open, great, throw it. If not, we're going to go ahead and turn and throw the shoot. Wherever this apex defender's jersey color is, we're going to make him wrong. Corner, snag, shoot. And then, of course, in this look with the cornerback deep and before the snap, while we want to throw this corner, it's probably not likely. He is not open by alignment. But again, we always have to look after we snap the ball. It could be a disguise. If he slams down, we'd love to throw that corner. If he stays back or bails out even more, then we're quickly moving on for the flats reads, all based on this apex defender. Let's show a few clips. And again, we can start at our lower levels. We even have eight U teams running this, but this is one of our favorite, favorite concepts, no matter what level we are running it at. 10 U, it's deadly. Obviously, the younger you go, the less time you have, so you gotta get the ball out, and maybe the arm strength isn't always there, but the play is still deadly. 12 U, these defenses just aren't ready to really defend the pass like this. And these are true concepts that they really cannot unravel on the fly at this young age. And even in varsity high school, uh, they have a hard time. So you can see, even at the 12U level, amazing red zone play. It's, it's a play that can be run anywhere on the field. Now here's the 14U team. And we've been running this at through our whole youth programs for, for many years. So we have a lot of different quarterbacks, different teams, different receivers, all on film with success with this combination. And really when we get down to it, while you see a lot of these corners hitting, and that is the first read, so we're, you know, a lot of times that ball goes there based on the first read, but the goal is always to get these snags going. And if we can get these snags moving like this, and really teach these receivers how to hunt grass. Watch how this guy hunts the grass, finds it, sits in it. That's a first down. All right, so that's a wrap on our three core plays. But the most important thing to keep in mind is that with the youth passing system, for every single concept that we have, we will place your quarterbacks into a simple, repeatable process that they step through on every single snap at your practice. Then with our player book mobile decision-making app, your quarterback will step through that exact same process taking endless virtual reps on their phones outside the pressure of practice. Always great talking ball with you, coach. Before we start to sign off, did you have anything to add about practice in general? Anything that you have found successful over the years? After that practice on Thursday, we have a thing called Thursday night football. And Thursday night football is all the, the guys that aren't traveling or the, the guys that are traveling that aren't gonna play very much, we'll go live for about 35 plays. And I think that that uh, develops our film tremendously. Uh, that's their game. 
uh, and it's gotten to be such a tradition. Uh, the varsity guys are all out there cheering, some of them occasionally in huddles, getting people fired up. Uh, from Love that, Coach. I've actually heard of high school teams doing something similar, basically letting all their reserves go at it in a similar fashion toward the end of the week. With the smaller roster, sometimes a few starters have to jump in to fill out a few key positions, but I think I'm going to have to try that. That sounds like a blast. All right. Thanks again, coaches, for joining me for this episode. Please do, again, like, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe to this channel so you can get the next one. Uh, obviously, we are excited to talk to you about four verts and how that has its own day in the sun in our offense because it's so important and so much fun to run, and we have so much success with it. Had to add it into this offense, and it really does uh, meld well with the way that we do our open grass reads and taking gifts. It's all about that, but with the opportunity to strike big at any moment. Please continue to share this with other coaches, and let me know if you have any questions at playerbook.com about the offense. As you know, there's other coaches that run this offense at playerbook.com talking about it, and I'll be there as well to discuss and answer any questions you might have to make sure you can plug this offense in and score points. See you on the next one, coaches.